praise the Lord. It's good to be here again tonight with Free Indeed Ministries. My name is Susan. And um, I just ask your prayers tonight that I can deliver what is heavy on my heart this evening. Um, we are in the end time, and it's so important that we know the truth. And that's what's on my heart tonight, the truth. Um, I know I've, I've uh, spoke of my testimony before, how I was raised in church and, um, you know, just doing everything I was told and, and being a good person and, you know, what have you. But, but then coming to the realization of how much I needed God um, what I didn't have, realizing that when I stood before him, there was something he was going to, if you want to say, require of me that, that had to be in me, and that was his love, the love of God that I'd love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and my neighbor as myself. And, <clears throat> and being honest with myself, I knew that those things weren't there. And, and uh, essentially my life was a pretense, you know, just doing things but not really being what God would have me be. And uh, there was a song that I, I remembered today that, that really touched me at that time, and I want to share the words with you. It says, I can look good when I want to. I know the right things to say. I cover up what I don't want you to see, but you see it anyway. Maybe I think I can fool you. Maybe I'm fooling myself. I want to change, but I don't know how. Lord, I need your help. I'm tired of hiding my weakness. I'm tired of trying to look strong. I don't want to say that everything's fine when there's so much that's wrong. Tell me again that you love me, Lord, though it's more than my heart can understand. And I will lay down all my disguises and show you who I am. No more pretending, no more pretending. Lord, I know I need to tell you the truth tonight. Everything is not all right in my life, and I need you more than ever before, I don't want to pretend anymore. <clears throat> and that's how I seen myself at that time and, and just began to seek the Lord and seek the truth and seek him and what it was, why Jesus died on the cross and, and all of these things. And praise the Lord. The scripture says, when you seek him with all your heart, you will find him and you will find him. And when you find him, he will change everything. He says, come unto me, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's exactly what he's talking about, just being free from sin, not having to worry about sinning because it's not there. It's not there. And <clears throat> I want to start tonight in John, the 18th chapter, and I'm going to start at the 36th verse. John 18, verse 36. Jesus answered. This is when uh, they had brought Jesus before Pilate uh, to have him crucified. And Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. He said, my kingdom don't have anything to do with the things of earth. Um, he didn't got, die to give us riches. He didn't die to give us the things of the earth. His kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. He died that we could have the things of the spirit. <clears throat> Pilate therefore said unto him, art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause 
came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus said, I was born for one purpose, to show you the truth, to bear witness of the truth. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? What is truth? Truth is not religion. Truth is not doctrine. Truth is not law. None of those things are truth. What is truth? (coughs) Excuse me. In 1 John 1 and 5, it tells us that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. In John, it also tells us that God is love. The scriptures tell us that God is righteousness. In Isaiah 45 and verse 7, God said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. He's not saying, I created darkness. He's saying, I am light. Everything that I am is light. In me is no darkness. So anything that's not me is darkness. Um, I am peace. Anything that's not me, God speaking, anything that's not peace is evil. He, He doesn't make those things, but because he is good, anything else is bad. Because he is righteous, anything else is unrighteous. Because he is holy, anything that's not him is unholy. In uh, John, it tells us that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were created by him. It says that he was... uh, Life, light, Jesus said, I'm the way, the word made flesh, the express image of God. I'm here to tell you tonight that God is truth. In him is no lie. He is truth. He's goodness. He's righteousness. He's holiness. I, 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 don't even, I don't know how to say it any different. But if you can just get a picture of God tonight. He is righteousness. He is holiness. He is love. He is truth. He is goodness. He is mercy. He is... All of these things and anything else is not him. It's not truth. It's not of him. In Exodus, the 19th chapter, When God had brought the children of Israel out of Egypt by mighty hand through all the different plagues and stuff and through the Red Sea, he brought them out of Egypt and he brought them to Mount Sinai. And in verse 3, we'll start, Exodus 19, verse 3. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob... And tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine and you shall be Unto me, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. 
These are the words which thou shalt tell the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid their face, laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. I want to look back at verse 5. God said, now, if, if you will obey my voice indeed. I looked that up, and it's all one phrase, and it means to perceive. It means to regard as being such. Um. I don't know how else to explain that except he says, and you shall be unto me. It's a state of being. He said, I want you to hear my word and realize I'm talking about a state of being. I'm talking about you seeing this as such. And keep my covenant. And when I looked up that word covenant, um, I have looked this up before, but it didn't. It didn't come alive to me like it did this time. It means a cutting as if slicing through two pieces of flesh. And when I read that, my mind and my heart immediately went to uh, Colossians 2, 10 and 11, where it talks about a circumcision that's made without hands. That's what a circumcision is, a cutting away. And, and God said, this is the covenant I'm going to make. This is the cutting away that I'm going to make with you. If you'll hear my voice and you'll see it as being so, there's going to be a covenant between us. There's going to be a cutting away of something. Um, and in Romans 2.29, it talks about the circumcision of the heart. The cutting away of the, the heart. And that's what God is offering these children of Israel. He said, if you'll just hear me, and you'll realize that I'm talking about a state of being, and you'll hold on to that. You'll keep it. You'll cherish it. You'll covet, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, You'll hold on to it dearly. There's another word for that, but I can't think what it is right now. But he says, if you do that, you will be. You will be a holy nation. You will be my special people. And they said, yes, we'll do that. Now I want to turn to uh, Deuteronomy 5. Because here gives us a little bit better of account of when he does come down. It, it goes on here, but it's a little bit easier to read in Deuteronomy 5. So here they are. They're prepared for the Lord to come down. And in verse 6, the Lord comes down on the mountain in a fire. And he says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out from the house of bondage. Brought thee out of Egypt from the house of bondage. He's, he's just reminding them what he had done for them. He brought them out of bondage. They were slaves in Egypt, and he brought them out. Here again, we're talking about a state of being. We're talking about what is. And I'm going to take a little liberty here because... I'm going to read it like I believe God said it. I'm going to read it perceiving it, (laughs) if, if you will. He says, I'm God. I'm the one that brought you out of bondage. You won't have other gods before me. You won't have to make images. You won't have to bow down before other gods. You won't have to sacrifice your children to other gods. You won't have to do the things that other so-called gods do. You'll be mine. 
you won't have to take my name in vain. Because when you go out, I'm going to be with you. You'll get to keep a Sabbath day, a day that everybody gets to rest, and you can remember how I brought you out. You'll honor your father and mother. You won't kill. You won't steal. You won't commit adultery. You won't bear false witness against your neighbor. You won't be covetous. These are things you had to endure when you was in bondage. You won't have this anymore. If they could have perceived that, if they could have seen, but what they heard was, thou shalt not have other gods before me. He was telling them, you won't. You won't kill each other. You won't bow down to other gods and give your children and, and do all of these things. But they couldn't perceive it. They couldn't hear it. Verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and out of the thick darkness, with a great voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. And it came to pass when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that you came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness. He came down. He showed them who he was. He showed them what a loving, kind, gracious God that he was. He showed them what truth was. What he created man to be. When he created man in the beginning, in his image, man wasn't a murderer. He wasn't a thief. He, all, all, none of these things. They said, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God does talk with man and he liveth. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto all, us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when you spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto me. They have well said all that they have spoken. Now they said, why should we hear the voice of God and die? If we hear God anymore, we'll die. And that's true. They wouldn't have died physically. But that old man would have died. That old man would have been cut away and they would have been, there's that state of being, they would have been the people of God. They would have been his. They would have been in his image. But they didn't want to die. Uh, it says that the fire would consume them. And what did John the Baptist say about Jesus? He said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, with that spirit of truth that will cut away, that will kill the flesh. This is what they needed, but they didn't receive it. Why? Verse 29 God said, oh, that there were such a heart in them 
that they would fear me and keep my commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. All God wants for his people is good. And he said, if they just had such a heart that they could hear, if they just had such a heart. In Ezekiel 36, he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sprinkle you with clean blood and water and, and take away, well, let me just turn there. I can't quote it exactly. Uh, Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Verse 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. God said, oh, if they had just had such a heart, but they didn't. He said, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to give you a new heart. And we know that we receive that new heart at Calvary. When the old is cut away through the circumcision made without hands, And the Spirit of Christ comes in, that new heart with the law of God, with the love of God written on it. The love of God fulfills the law. Verse 36 says, no, verse 37 says, Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of to do it for them. So, When Jesus died on Calvary, he died for everybody. He died that all could be free from sin. But until you want it, until you inquire of it, until you ask God to come into your heart and to take away the filthiness, it's not going to happen. Even though he did it for everybody, he says, yet I will be inquired of for this. You're going to ha- he's not going to just force it on you. You're going to have to want it. You're going to have to want the freedom. Now I want to turn to Romans 1. And I read this last time. And that's just when it came al- so alive to me. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. For everyone that has the truth and yet they live in unrighteousness, they live in sin, the wrath of God will be revealed from heaven against you. Why? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God showed it unto them. And this is when God came down. And he showed them who he was. He showed them who he was. But for us today, do you know we have it? He's revealed himself to us through this word. We just read what God was like. And all the things about God, all the things about how he would give us that new heart, it's all revealed in his word. We have his word. So if we hold this word in unrighteousness, woe be unto us. His wrath will be revealed. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. 
in my mind, for the first time, do I even understand this particular verse, but the invisible things of him, who he is, is revealed in his word. We can see that he's righteousness, that he's holiness, that he's goodness, that he's truth, that he's life, that he's the way. All of these things, we can see who God is. And we can know whether we're his or not. We can know whether we be his. so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. But when I read this, When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They weren't thankful. They became vain in their imagination. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory. What is the glory of the uncorruptible God? His truth, his righteousness, his holiness, his goodness, everything that he is, that's his glory. And they changed that to something that a corruptible man could do. They made a law. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. Thou shalt do this. Thou shalt not do that. Thinking that they could make themselves look like the glory of God. Verse 24. Wherefore, because of this, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. So what they did, they changed the truth of God to a lie. They changed the truth of God to a law. They changed the truth of God from just being that child of God to trying to pretend to be that child of God. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. It says he gave them up to it. He didn't put it in them. It was already in them. We were born with unrighteousness, unholiness, evil, all of these things in us. God just gave them up to it. If you don't want the truth, have what you want. Have a lie and everything that goes with it. Likewise, the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Because they didn't want to acknowledge the truth of God. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Worthless mind, okay? If you want law, live by law. It says to do those things which are not convenient. I look this up. It means can't reach to. The works of the law will never attain the righteousness of God. This is not a time 
to play with God. The end is near. Jesus said, if you, in John 8, if you'll continue in my word, this is his word. If you'll continue in it, you are my disciples indeed. That word disciples means students. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You may go to church. You may have been raised in church. I was, but just because you're raised in church doesn't mean you know the truth. Just because you call yourself a Christian doesn't mean you're free. Do you know the truth? Do you know who God is? Do you understand that he's righteous and holy and good? I I, I can't, I can't say these things enough because just like he told them, you won't take my name in vain. A child of God does not take God's name in vain. That means when they say they're a child of God, they're a child of God. And everything they are is of God. That's what it means to be born of God, to be of God. And everything in their heart is of God. If it's unrighteousness, unholiness, lie, any of these things, it's not of God. What's in your heart? Is it the truth? Is it God and his Christ? Or is it a lie? Is it religion? Is it law? Is it well, I did this, or I did that, or I do this. Is it truth, or is it a lie? Be sure the wrath of God will be revealed against all unrighteousness. If you'll be honest, and it's not truth, Ask him. He died to give it to you. Do you want it? Do you want to be free? Do you want to have that life inside of you? Or do you just want to pretend you do? No more pretending. No more pretending. Lord, I know I need to tell you the truth tonight. Everything is not all right in my life. And I need you more than ever before. I don't want to pretend anymore. Pretending is hard. When Paul said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? See, Paul was pretending to be a child of God. He was living by law. And he says, I know what's right. I know what I'm supposed to do. But I find out that sometimes I don't. (laughs) I know sometimes I do things that I shouldn't do. Who shall deliver me from this? Paul was tired of pretending. He was tired of kicking against the pricks, as Jesus told him.
But when he faced the truth on that day to Damascus, it says that a light shone from out of heaven. The truth shone from out of heaven, and he seen Jesus. And he said, Lord, that's how quick salvation is. Turning from the works of the flesh to Christ. That's how quick salvation comes. He was changed in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye, he was changed. And you can be too. And you can be free. And you can live. I was reminded today as I was reading these scriptures and stuff, um, and I, I cannot remember the whole story in full, but Brother Surface saying that he heard the Lord tell him to just relax, you know, just relax and be who he is. And, and Brother Surface said he heard it, I think, several times, maybe three or four times. He said, God, I can't. I've got to, you know, be careful. I've got to hold myself in. I've got to do this and that. And, and the Lord told him, relax and be who you are as a child of God. There is rest in being a child of God. I don't know if this message tonight should be titled The Truth or The State of Being because it's that simple. Being a child of God or pretending to be a child of God. Praise the Lord.